All right, I'm here at Ponta Delgada Airport, checking in for my flight to Pico Island this morning. Going for security now. So unfortunately, the lounge in Ponta Delgada is closed as well. So Priority Pass has incorrect information on their website, unfortunately. So as expected, you can see that there is absolutely no view of the Pico Volcano. So I'm not very inclined to book any guided tour today. I might just focus on the historic UNESCO World Heritage Site wineries or vineyards that are located here. But yeah, I'm going to put a picture here on the screen so you guys know what this should look like. But yeah, it's absolutely covered in cloud today. So I don't think it's going to make an appearance. Looks like locals also don't think it's going to make an appearance today. The ticket only cost me $15 US, so I'm not going to complain. It is what it is, and I'll see whatever I get to see, I suppose. So about two kilometers from here, there's actually a set of lava cliffs where the lava spilled into the sea. So I'm going to go check those out by foot. And then another kilometer or two further are the UNESCO protected World Heritage Site vineyards, which are over 500 years old. So I can't wait to see those. So some of you might be wondering why I'm not renting a car. It's because due to restrictions, both my Canadian driver's insurance and my credit card insurance don't cover me for any liability here uh, due to COVID. So you're kind of on your own right now, which is scary when you're renting a car for sure, because it can bankrupt you very easily if you damage it. It's definitely not an easy walk. Nine kilometers via my route. It could be eight if I went this way. There's a huge elevation gain that way. And all the sites are this way and they're actually really close to the airport. So I do wanna go check out the wineries that you can see there and the World Heritage Site. So I guess here goes nothing. To begin my exploration of the island of Pico, I would walk two kilometers northwest from the airport to the impressive lava cliffs of Cachorro. From there, I would check out the wineries and ancient vineyards of the UNESCO-inscribed Pico Vineyard Culture World Heritage Site. Then continue my way eight kilometers further west to the quaint seaside village of Madalena, the largest town on the island of Pico. So in a similar vein to the wineries, you can see these small little gardens, basically little partitions created from volcanic rock. So one of the cool things about Pico Island is how the locals over the centuries, since the 16th century, have adapted to living on a volcanic island and use the lava, as you can see here, use the lava rock for pretty ingenious purposes. So we're going to see more of this when we go check out the vineyards up the road. You can see just how incredibly green the Azores are. I love the Azores for this purpose. They are so tropical and beautiful and green. You can see the palms swaying. In the summertime, this place feels exactly like Hawaii. So keep that in mind, especially if you're a European traveler, this is close to home, or if you're a North American traveler and you've never heard of this place, this is one of Europe's undiscovered gems. So come here while you can before everybody realizes what it is. And that is the beautiful island of Sao Jorge. I don't think I'll get there, but you never know. I have no plan. This island has a completely different look and vibe than the others that I visited so far on this trip. Such white moss against this beautiful yellow and green vegetation, really cool. And really great views of Fayal Island where the city of Horta is located in the distance. Beautiful. So this beautiful rugged black rock coastline is Cachorro, which are the lava cliffs here on Pico Island. Pretty impressive. This whole coastline is made of this black lava rock. Very cool. It's pretty windy, spinning a little bit, but thankfully I'm staving off the rain. 
this. Check it out. Crashing right beneath me. I'm really glad I walked from the airport at this point because I would never be experiencing the things like this. This spot is not included on any of the tours that I was looking at, so glad I was able to come out here and actually experience this place. Oh wow, that's a huge wave. Crazy. Wow, that was the tallest one of all so far. It didn't hit here, but boy, I was worried for a second. Absolutely cool coastline here in Pico Island. Beautiful. And great views of Fayal Island there in the distance. And again, if we pan over this way, that's Sao George. The lava cliffs of Cachorro, everybody. Beautiful place. I'm continuing my way down here. Got about two more kilometers to the winery and then a still another six kilometers or so to the town of Madalena. So, I'm going to be spending the majority of the day walking today, but that is perfectly fine because it is the best way to experience the sights of rural Pico, as you can see here. Such a beautiful island. So much color here. I just had a local pick me up. Looks like he thought I was hitchhiking, but in any case, I was picked up and dropped off here at the entrance of the Azores Wine Company. So I'm going to head inside and check out these beautiful, historic, UNESCO-protected vineyards. These are centuries old enclosures built from the lava rock to grow wine. They're not exactly the same as the ones that we saw in the Canary Islands. Those ones were much smaller, it seems. These ones are a lot taller and wider. The history here is just outstanding. Again, this is all centuries old. So since the 16th century, since the 1500s, these pots, basically, enclosures have been used to grow wine in this region of Pico. I'm gonna head up to the winery now and see if I can get a tasting and learn a bit more about the process. There's not really any marked path, so I think I went the wrong way because it's taking forever to get up here. It's kind of like a maze, almost like a corn maze. Pretty impressive though. This is just a slight fraction of it. It goes on for literally kilometers in this direction. Still no sign of Mount Pico. There should be a perfect cone in sight, but there is not today. Quite unfortunate. This is the little winery they have built into the side of the hill. They offer tastings here at 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. I believe each day and they're 20 euros to 30 euros depending on the package that you choose for the wine tasting. If you're looking for a glass of wine again they don't offer that so just know that just go get it at a restaurant or bar in Madalena. It's good, I like it, thank you. Canada. Canada? Yeah. Where? Uh, in Calgary, Western Canada. Okay, so on the other side. It's, it's a new winery, so it's not totally ready yet. So oh! We just opened the tasting room by the end of August. Oh, did you? Okay. So, wow. Uh, huh. It's still a uh, working process. Oh, yeah, sure. Very interesting. So really nice staff there. They gave me a glass of wine, which was really cool of them. Really cool to see the wine growing region here in Pico. Absolutely cool historic structures. The vines are out of season. He was telling me that they pretty much have shut down production since um, the end of August. So at the end of August, they have their harvest and that's pretty much it for the year. Their specialty here is white wine and that's because the white wine grapes are the predominant grapes in this region. One of the only places in the world where you can grow that variety of grape, he was telling me. It's not easy to grow wine in an area that is pretty much a volcanic landscape, but this ingenious engineering has basically allowed them to adapt to the landscape over the centuries and produce some of Portugal's best wines in this region. I'm heading back down towards the coast now and then onward to the village of Madalena on the west coast of the island. Really cute little houses here in this small village. Caix do Marato. 
right along the coast here. You can still see Fial Island. It's getting much closer as I'm making my kilometers here. I'm about halfway at this point to Madalena. Still have 5.3 kilometers to go up this road. Remains to be seen if I'll be picked up by anybody, but hitchhiking is not really my goal. I'm just trying to soak up the sights like this really cute town along route. Really colorful, cute homes here all along the way. This is a really cool rural route. It's not the main highway through the island, so that's why it's actually pretty light in terms of traffic. Only about one car every four to five minutes passes by, so pretty good for walking in that way. We're gonna do our hourly checkup here. Is Pico visible? No. All right, four more kilometers to Madalena. I'm definitely glad I walked from the airport. I mean, I'm not trying to even really save money. It's only about $18. That's a considerable distance to get to the town of Madalena. But there's just so much to see along the way that it just made more sense to walk and experience rural Pico Island at its best. So the walk is pretty doable. Nine kilometers or about five miles. Could be done in two hours. I've been taking about six to get this done. So absolutely gorgeous. Stopping every few minutes for pictures and soaking up the rural beauty of Pico Island, Portugal. I've made it to the next village along the way here. This is Formosina. A lot of whitewashed homes. And I'm getting really close now to Madalena. I got about two and a half to three kilometers to go and I should be in the village. Really unique cacti here again, or I'm not sure what kind of tree that is, but something in the cactus family for sure. And these really cool lava rock homes pretty much everywhere. Really amazing views now of Fayal Island. It's no longer on my left, it's actually on my right now, so that tells me that I'm no longer walking directly west, I'm now walking south. So I've passed the curve of the island now from east to west and now heading to the south. The town of Madalena is only about a kilometer away at this point. These are the finest form of lava enclosures that I've seen so far. These beautiful vineyards. This is one of the most unique things I've seen, I think. Goes without saying that this is a pretty special place that deserves its recognition as a World Heritage Site. Just seeing these ancient structures all across the island. So cool. So I'm leaving the Wine Culture North Zone World Heritage Site. And I'm very proud of myself for walking all the way from the airport. Entering the town of Madalena now, and I only have about five more minutes to get to my hotel for the night. Good day of walking here on Pico Island. Beautiful place. So there are some interesting murals here. You can see squid fighting a whale. I guess they have a pretty strong whaling heritage here in Madalena. It took literally all day, with stops of course, to take photos. But it was a good nine to, well, probably more like 11 kilometers. A lot of murals around here though. Really strange. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Fish in a glass. Random. So just like I saw on Fuerteventura, there is quite a few windmills here. Murals and windmills, I guess. So I've made it to my hotel. That was a long day for sure. Looking back at where I've come from, it's been a long walk, but I have made it here to the Hotel Caravelas. The nicest property in town, four stars. Right on the harbor here in Madalena. Just checking into the room. It's quite hot and it smells like bleach, but that's kind of the case pretty much everywhere due to cold. Two beds quite far away from each other. But yeah, pretty spacious room though, by and large. And it overlooks, I'm guessing, the courtyard. Yes, not the sea. Didn't pay for the view in this case, but pretty decent accommodations for the night. So that's good, not a dump. And I used points for this room, so it didn't cost me any more than $4. So that's not bad at all. So there is still no clear view of Pico Volcano. Hopefully that'll change tomorrow morning. I'm gonna get up pretty early and see if the skies are clear enough to see the mountain, but not gonna hold my breath. This is the 
town square here in Madalena. A lot of uh, chirping little birds everywhere here. some local honey, cheese, and bread here with a pint of Superbock at the Sink Cafe in Madalena Pico. And for my main, I ordered a local burger, so we'll see what this is. So it is a pretty cute town, as you can see. Not as cute as Angra, but cute. 